Philippians chapter number seven, he says, but what things were gained to me, these I've counted loss. And he's talking about all of the things in, you know, verses number four, five, six, basically, and seven. He says, but what, so, what things were gained to me, I count them loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish. I'm reading out the New King James. That I may gain Christ. Now, we got to find, we, we got to really grab what Paul is talking to. He says, I counted all those things lost that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Woo! Underline that, circle it, or just, just, just sear that in your mind. He says, he says I, I, I'm doing all of this, Gave up the things I, I counted gain. I just, I just counted them as rubbish. Everything I've lost, it doesn't matter because I'm after something. And he says, I'm after some knowledge. I'm after something that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Now, this is crucial that you understand this because his death ain't necessarily your death in, in as far as the physical dimension. In other words, he's not saying, you know, I want to suffer until I die like Jesus did. That, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about something totally different that you're going to understand. He says, I, I want to know the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. So he says again, oh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and understand his sufferings and what he went through so that I can arrive at the resurrection from the dead. And then he says, not that I've already attained or not that I've already arrived or am I already perfected, but I press on. Somebody say, I'm pressing too. What you're pressing for, Paul, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended it, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching for those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward, the King James says, the high call of God in Christ Jesus. He says, I'm after something, y'all. I'm after something. I'm, I'm after something that the resurrection brought me into. And he says, even in all of his revelation, he says, I still ain't got there but I'm going to chase it till I leave here. Something happened in that resurrection that I need to lay hold of. So now let me just jump through the chase with this part because when I was young, they, they taught me that the pressing toward the mark and the high goal and all that was to make sure I reach heaven. You know, and yeah, that's, that's good. That's, that's great. But that's not what Paul is talking about. Because Paul of all people knew you don't have to press to make heaven. He of all people is the one gave us the revelation of redemption and how it's by grace and not of works, lest any of us boast. So what is he talking about pressing toward then? What is he talking about reaching after? Because heaven is a done deal. Look at somebody say, you going to heaven. That's a done deal. That, that's done. That's, that's done. That's, that's settled. That's, that's finished. No, the high call that we pressing toward is, is, is something that Paul unpacked 
in the, revel in, in the revelation of Jesus Christ. And here it is in Colossians chapter number one. So verse number nine says, for this reason, we also since the day we heard it, meaning whenever these people came into the knowledge of Christ, whether it was the church at Ephesus, the church at Colossae, the church at Philippi, Philippi. He always said the th same thing. He was like, you know, since you're now born again, he starts to say, I've been praying for you, that you don't stop right there. And so he's saying that after every church, he, he leads out like I've been praying since I heard you came to the faith, since I heard you got this knowledge. I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying for you. And so he says, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with all knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Woo, somebody underline that spiritual understanding. I, I, he says, I'm praying that you be filled with all knowledge and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. Anybody want to increase in the knowledge of, of God? If you think we've learned everything we need to learn, you are badly mistaken. Paul saying all that he showed me, and ain't Paul saying ain't none of y'all been caught up to the third heaven where, where you didn't know where you was in the body, or out of the body. He saying ain't none of you been there. I've been there, and I still don't know everything I need to know. That's what I'm after. So think about us that there is so much more out there that we need to know. How did the Holy Ghost tell us tonight? And then he says, so that you may have the increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long-suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Good God. Man, there's so much scripture in here, I don't think we'll ever get done with it. Tonight, Satan has absolutely no power over you. None. Delivered from his authority. And then conveyed or transferred us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Delivered out of the authority of darkness. Darkness has no power. And he did that by transferring us into the kingdom or the authority of God. And then it says, for by him are all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they're thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning. Did you hear what? And he is the head of the body, the church. Who's the head of the body? Christ. He who, who is he also the head of? The church. And then it said something about Christ that we're going to unpack. It said, who is the beginning? He's the beginning. He's the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. That in all things he may have the preeminence. 